I, I think we were alarmed by the numbers, not just from the police, the army, uh, civil defense, even road safety, immigration. We were very alarmed with those numbers. By the time you put all of it together, it's about 40,000 or slightly more. Uh, this is alarming for a state election uh, where you have less than uh, 3,000 polling units. Uh, and that worry was much more about ensuring that the police, the security services, do not frighten away voters by intimidating presence. Uh, but on election day, we did see uh, police in virtually every polling unit. Uh, we did see civil behavior on the part of the police. Uh, we, we did meet with the police on the eve of the elections to discuss their deployment plan. Um, they did explain how this was going to work, which was four policemen per polling unit, and by the time the calculation uh, is done, it's nearly 9,000 in terms of the polling unit presence. And they provided further explanation to talk about the police deployment to state, strategic st state institutions that need to be protected on election day. Um, I do not think uh, that we need uh, the numbers of security that was deployed. And I must make the point also, I do not think under any circumstance that we need the army deployed to the field on election day. Uh, if the army wants to be involved in uh, providing backup for police, I think that should be that if you do not have the police at strategic state institutions, they can be deployed to defend whether it's the central bank or ministries or agencies of government, but certainly not in any way be a backup for election duties. I think this is wrong. I think this sends wrong signals to citizens, and I think it's frightening, and I don't think this country needs to spend the amount of resources it spends on elections.